Well, welcome to Wyoming Armory, right here in the mecca of American vintage firearms, Cody, Wyoming. Now, here at Wyoming Armory, we're well known for our color case hardening and really our finishes in general. You see, we offer a, a variety of correct finishes for vintage firearms, from the color case hardening, of course. Um, we use a dew light bluing, which was the earliest developed uh, hot caustic bluing salts. Uh, we have rust bluing. But we want to expand our offerings of, of finishes, so we're going to start doing some experimentation today on another type of bluing that was used extensively in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, and that's charcoal bluing. And because we're set up here for color case hardening, some we have a lot of the same equipment and, and uh, supplies that we would use for charcoal blue. Now, I, I've never done charcoal blue. I've studied up on it a lot over the years, and I've been just kind of waiting to, to get started over here to, to give it a try. So what I did is just yesterday I went down to the hardware store, and I, I picked up just a, a piece of mild steel and, and cut up some te test pieces, and then I've been hand polishing... Um, a few pieces to different grits, different polishes, and we're going to go out to the color case room now and give it a try. See, see if we can't uh, recreate some of that that rich, lustrous finish that charcoal bluing provides. Now, in doing research, I've come across a couple of different methods for doing charcoal blue. And one method was basically they they put polished parts in, in the charcoal in open areas, heated the charcoal, and then would pull the, the parts out from time to time, burnish them with a burlap or oakum, and put them back in until they, they got the desired color. And, and I've even read where that's how Winchester did it uh, back in the late 19th century. But there's another method now using the, the kilns here, uh, that's much more controlled, and, and so um, I've, I've seen some people have some pretty good success with with using our crucibles like we use for case color hardening, putting the parts in the in the charcoal, and then just heating them up, letting them soak for a couple of hours, and then bringing them out and just doing one burnish at the end. So of course that seems like a much simpler way to do it. So that's the way we're going to try first and, and see if we can get some good results now. Our setup here is that we've got these, these pieces, I've got one piece that, that is polished to a, a mirror shine, then I've got another piece that on one side I, I've polished to 400 grit, the other polished to 600 grit. And then we'll, we'll put these in at about 750 degrees and just see what kind of color they take on. Now, um, we kind of expect that we would get some different colors at different temperatures. Now, if you're if you're familiar with the early Colt blue, with that that really lustrous and, and kind of a, a much more bluish color, um, we would expect that to get maybe at a, a little lower temperature. And then, of course, Winchester used this to blue receivers, and and so we know that that's more a darker type of a blue, almost a black, but with a, a bluish tint. So. That's why we're doing this. We're going to experiment, see if, see if it works, and see what kind of colors we get at different temperatures. So we've got some, some uh, wood charcoal here that we had, we had bought and, and didn't really work out for color case hardening. It just didn't produce the colors that we normally get. So we, we've got some of this extra. It's a real fine powder. And so we're going to try it with our, our uh, charcoal blue. And, and from what I've read from other people's experience, they thought the, the finer the charcoal, the better it was. So maybe this will work really good for charcoal blue. And if it does, then we kill two birds with one stone. We've got uh, a use for it, and, and um, it may be even a better substance to use for our, our charcoal blue. And we can't use it for our color, color case hardening now. Boy, it is a fine powder, too. Usually we'd have to tamp it down, and we will, but this is so fine, it's, it's going to cover it up. And really the, the charcoal, we're going, to, we're going to get color from the charcoal, but the, the main thing with, that we want with this charcoal is to keep oxygen away from the parts as they're bluing. That's why we want to get it tamped down real good. I'll use this cap here to tap it 
down. Now it's got the, the parts down low in there, so uh, we've got a little more coverage over the top to keep that oxygen out of the mix. And of course, we won't cover this. Or actually, we will. I'll put the cover on just to, to keep uh, oxygen out as much as possible. But we won't quench it at the end like we do on color case hardening. We're just we're going to heat it up at some much lower temperature, of course, 750, um, as opposed to the 13 to 1500 degrees that's typically used for color case hardening. Okay, so we're just about ready to take this over and put it in one of the ovens and get her heated up. Okay, so we've had this crucible soaking now at 750 degrees for two hours. So it's time to pull it out and see what we've got. Get this lid off of here. And here's the moment of truth. I believe this is the one that we went to a high polish. And let's burnish it. We've got some material here. We don't have burlap. Um, in future tests, we'll, we'll get some burlap. This is kind of the material that flour sacks are made out of. It's a, a kind of a rough linen, but not as not as rough as we'd like. We've got it oil impregnated, so let's burnish this off. Okay, so we do have some. Some really nice looking blue there, but we're not real. Um, let's see if we can get that to focus a little bit. We're not just great on uh, the color looks good, but it's a little kind of blotchy. And we'll see if maybe the the burnish and some some oil will make it even better. But it really does have that that kind of a nice cold blue to it. Okay, so let's pull the other one out now and see what we can see with it. Ooh, that one's really nice and dark and much more even. That's beautiful. I guess we don't have to be real dainty with it. So this side is 400 grit and really turns out nice. Let's see if we can get that. We've got, got some shine on it there. That is absolutely gorgeous. And that's a, a darker blue, more like what we would see on receivers. Um, but absolutely beautiful. And the other side we had 600 grit. Let's see if we can get that moved around here. interesting and that's why we're doing the experiment so we've got a, a really nice finish on here but again like the higher polish we've got kind of a it's kind of a blotchy appearance um, so maybe the this again is 600 grit that 400 grit turned out beautiful this is absolutely beautiful but it's almost got like a metal flake appearance to it so we've got a ways to go or maybe maybe 400 grits where we need to go with the polish on here to get it to come out. This, this other side here is just absolutely beautiful. Well, thanks for joining us today. And make sure and check back from time to time to see how we're doing developing this charcoal bluing process. I'm really excited about the possibilities. Well, until next time, happy trails from Cody, Wyoming.